didn't you catch the ball? Program 5 in our English video learning series from the Hartab Educational Multimedia Project. Today, in our final lesson, we look at the writing of complex sentences and essays. We hope that by the end of this lesson, you will be able to write complex sentences, a factual or informative essay. Now let's return to that noisy bunch of learners. My goodness! What is all this noise? Are you trying to break my classroom down? And you put your hand up? Sir, did sir saw the soccer final game on Friday? And I've heard about it. People seem unable to talk about anything else these days. It was awesome, sir. Danny Bear beat on up by a hair breath. Well done, boys. Now, if you can just calm down a little bit. I want you to tell us, of uh, those of us who were not there at the game, how the game was. Can you describe it to us? Right, right. Those who were not at the game, come sit here. Come over here. Come, come, come. Okay, okay, okay. Come, come down, come down. Come down. Okay, go for it now. Uh, describe the game to us. One by one, please. One by one, please. Yes, Julian. It was really spuff, sir. It was the under-13 teams playing. <coughs> yes, Malika. They played on Danny Bear's soccer field and the game started at 9 o'clock. Yes, Rodrigo. They played on Danny Bear. The stadium was packed. Yes, uh, Jonathan. So, maybe because both teams were strong teams, it was a very tough game, but our boys struggled to win. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> 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 it was a time that we went on to pay notice. Yes, sir. It was like this. The boy they put the ball in, sir. And then he hit like this and the ball go in, sir. Wow. What happened then? Both teams had strong and clever owners who took a shot. They only won because we lost with the last shot. Yes, sir. But, but sir, we won. Look at the score, what I say. Good. I'm so glad that you enjoyed the game. Now you here, listening to the game being described, what were the words used to describe the game? Sir, the first word I heard them describe the game with was puff. I don't know what it means. <laughs> You're right. Neither do I. Perhaps they can explain it. Sorry, sir. It means like, great, it was exciting. 
Thank you, Julian. What other descriptive words did you hear? It was fun. Yes, and? The, uh, the ones, uh, uh, the uh, guys, is strong. So. And tough, so. <laughs> Clever. Thank you. Let's continue. You can shove back now to your seats. Here we have a list of descriptive words they used to describe the game. Now instead of saying great, exciting, the game was great, exciting, fun, the boys were strong, tough, clever. Now Malaika, can you make a sentence for us with the word fun? We played a hard game and it was fun. Well said Malaika. How about strong? The other team strongly defend themselves against the opponents. Very good sentence, Rodriguez. Remember, it's opponent. Yes, sir. Yes, Jonathan. So, we tried to get many kicks, but it was tough to get the position of the ball. Good. That was a sentence with tough. And what about clever? The team made a clever game for the team. Well then, learners, you can give yourself a round of applause now. Now, viewers, let's take a look again at the sentences the class made. We have underlined some words for you. Do you know what we call the underlined words? Yes, I know you've got it. They are verbs. We call the words printed in bold phrases. Do you know what we mean by a phrase? A phrase normally consists of two or three words that are part of a full sentence, but in themselves do not have a full meaning as a sentence. But let's take a step back and see how a sentence is compiled. A basic or simple sentence consists of a subject, verb and object. For example... The boy kicks a ball. In this sentence, the boy is the subject, kicks the verb, and a ball, the object of the sentence. But when we add some phrases into the sentence to make it more descriptive and complex, we call it a complex sentence. For example, the sentence might now read, The small boy kicks the hard ball over his neighbor's fence. So we call a simple sentence with a verb and a phrase a complex sentence. Now we can look at the class of sentences again and see that they are complex sentences. Number one. They played an exciting game on Saturday morning. Played is the verb on Saturday morning, the phrase. Number two. We played the game and it was fun. Played is the verb. It was fun, the phrase. Number three. The other team strongly defended themselves against the opponent. Defended is the verb. Against the opponent is the phrase. Number four. They played the game with clever thoughts. Played is the verb. With clever thoughts is the phrase. Here are more examples. And look carefully which is the verb and which the phrase that makes the sentence a complex one. Here goes. Number one. Dr. Kluter has worked in Mariental for many years. Number two. Miss Smith has been teaching in Riaboth for 10 years now. Number three. Charlton played soccer all weekend, sir. So again, we say... When a simple sentence consists of a verb and a phrase, it is a complex sentence. Viewers, let's talk about that quite complex skill of writing an essay. Now, can you still remember all the details that the learners mentioned with regards to the game they watched? They talked about where the game was played, when the game was played, who played the game? How the game went?
and why this game took place. It was the final in a series, I think, to determine the champions for the year. These are the basic questions when writing an essay. What, when, who, where, how and why. Let's say we had to write about this soccer match in an essay form. How would we go about this? Yes, you're right. These questions will guide us in constructing an essay. Many people get confused about the structure of an essay. How should I begin? You may ask. Or, in what sequence do I write it? Well, here is the structure. The essay consists of three main parts. An introduction, body and the conclusion. That's not too hard, is it? And we can make use of some complex sentences when writing the essay. Now, in the introduction we usually introduce the topic we're writing about. In this case, we're writing about the sports event. Remember that the introduction will often make people either sit closer to hear better or switch off from what is being said. So make sure the introduction is interesting, fresh and lively. I watch a river team game on Friday between two teams both determined to win. Okay, this was quite a good introduction. As listeners want to know what was so riveting about this game they watched and what happened in the end as both teams were so determined to win. Alright. The second part of the essay is called the body, and this is the longest part. In this paragraph, you tell the reader more about the event and how it unfolded. It's like putting some meat on the bone. Here you may give some details about the game, for example about the excitement, the scores, the red card handed to a player, the penalties, and so on. And in the conclusion, we summarize the essay. In this case, we might end like this. With such a breathtaking end to the soccer season, I cannot wait to see what the new season will bring. And this brings us to the end of our final English lesson in this video learning series from the Heart Up Educational Multimedia Project in Namibia. Let's see what we have learned today. A complex sentence consists of a verb and a phrase. A phrase is not a sentence and cannot stand alone. We ask different questions when we plan to write an essay. Questions such as what? Where, when, who, why, how the events happened. An essay consists of an introduction, a body and a conclusion. Learners, please do not be scared at the prospect of writing an essay in school. It is quite interesting to do if you follow these basic rules. Well, it has been a pleasure to be in your company again on this program. Until another time, goodbye and happy learning.